Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Thousand Week Reich. I'm your host, Mr. Central Siberia Unif Unified Lava. But right now, we must talk about that focus. At last, we've done what many felt would be impossible for a small warlord state such as ours. We've brought all of Central Siberia under our banner. We are finally recognized as a force to be reckoned with, but the road ahead is even tougher. We must take on two juggernauts on both sides of us. We're going to need to take efforts to further unify our nation against our two threats. We stand against the revisionists and against imperialism. So we get cores, basically, even though I think we should already have the cores. Remove members of the Second Union, which is good. Remove a limping army, which, you know, it's not bad, it's not great. It's a give and take. And we get more tech and defense, so that's actually really good to do them. And we get the new social state, which hurt, oh my gosh, that hurts us really badly. But we do get a research slot, so that'll be good. Alright, so what's next? Handling the disparate factions, handling the industrial base, handling the state. Advice from Stalin. Advice from Kalinin. Oh boy. Probably go with Stalin. Let's see, is there anything we want immediately? Factories would be very nice to get. Ooh, but more factories are there too. What's over here? Political power. Um, socialism. Ooh, we get more political power that way. That's pretty nice. But let's go with handling the industrial base. Despite the efforts of the many great men during the Great Patriotic War, including our very own Nikolai, Alexei Nikolaevich, the Union was unfortunately unable to move industry eastwards, and much of it was down under German ownership. But that's not to say that we're completely devoid of industry. Novosibirsk and Norilsk, so some of the most industrial cities in the motherland, are under our control. We must further industrialize or industrial production, or much further industrial production, to fit our needs, so we may meet our two rivals who have the advantage of a larger industrial base. Interesting. We'll keep going with all that stuff, and then we're going to immediately read the next one, too, because we're going to favor uh -oh, Antonin's reforms. Alexei Enokentievich. That's a good idea of how we should be run the economy. We can afford none of the Alexei Nikolaevich's technocratic solutions, when we can barely even afford to keep running what we have. We must work towards the uh, solutions which are cheap and not only improve our economy with no risk of failure, unlike Alexei Nikolaevich's doomed to fail programs. Alexei Enokentievich will guide our nation into a great and prosperous future without reinventing the wheel. This way we get some military factories, because we desperately need some more military factories. Oh my goodness. And then we'll march victoriously to Moscow with the raised flags and bayonets that will carry Beria's head after all the disgusting deeds he committed, and will not stop there either. Moscow will be only the first phase in our victorious steps. Norilsk was the only small obstacle that imposed itself and did not want to agree peacefully, for the sake of a greater goal, the salvation of Mother Russia. I'm speaking to you as a marshal of the Red Army and as the leader of the state. This will only be the beginning of our campaign. Today is Norilsk. Tomorrow it will be Moscow, and the day after tomorrow the whole of Germany will tremble before the song of the Red Army. The marshal was in the climax of his speech, when the people greeted him with loud applause and shouts, letting them know that they would be with him, to the very end, waving to the gathered people. Zukov returned to his office. While the applause continued, he knew one thing, everything he had said so far was true, and he would not stop until he fulfills everything he promised himself and the people today. I want to see Mr. Schmittler's grave burned down. We have a, some army, some stuff here, but hmm, we'll see. Definitely need a lot more of this and early artillery. So we'll do that. We'll do that. We got any, We need more stuff. Holy crap! I'm telling you as if uh, as if I was one of you, knowing that what an ordinary person thinks when he hears the word liberation of the Russian people, of the Russian people. We've gone through many different periods in which we have seen our nation fragment in a relentless number of pieces scattered across the Siberian wasteland, leaving what had charms to German paws. We've been given a chance. People now we are able to do everything that was necessary in order to restore the lost glory, lost honor, and respect. Norilsk is just one of the step stopovers, and it's desolate waste, and that will serve us so that we can kickstart the war machines and embark on a campaign that will end this hopelessness in which we find ourselves. Kostigin ended his speech. Coley, but again, convincingly, as if he could always speak in such a way that people listen to him attentively and remain faithful to the speech, no matter how long and short, or loud or quiet. He greeted the people by waving both hands, continuing towards his office. And now, the race with Zukov can begin, he said quietly to himself before closing the balcony window on which he had stood a few moments ago. He said that he would be back soon. Huh. And that's okay with us. Oh, oh. Okay, now they're going to war with these guys. That's interesting. But we do have some comments to go through as well. Bonachenko, good luck. Chuikov, how many divisions do you have? Oh my goodness. Handling the industrial base, though. The matter of the industry has been a pressing one for uh, one for every communist government, and ours is no different. In regards to the matter, the two main proposals that come up, the first is that of Alexei Antonov, who proposes to keep things similar to Stalin's planning and rebuilding industry in a similar way to its pre-war status. On the other hand, Kostigin has proposed a more technocratic reconstruction plan, focusing on high-end and light industry, or high-end tech. What should we choose? No one. Emphasizing the need of unification. With the wars that have been fought in the name of reunifying our motherland, many people are growing fatigue, but we must not lose sight of what is closer to now than ever. We must emphasize to the people that now, more than has been since our nation collapsed, reunification is within reach, and encourage patriotism and support for the final campaign so is reunification. Still, still building some more cities. Uh, how many uh, divisions do these guys have, too? Because we can only focus on one side at a time, so. 
And it's going to be pretty problematic for us. I don't know if we can actually do that successfully. We might use constant commands. Hopefully not, but we'll see what happens. Actually, yeah, that's good. Because we do need to go east eventually. Do we open beans? Huh. That's good to have ice there. Alright, handling desperate factions. It is one... An open secret. That our state suffers from severe ideological factionalism. Between the plural nationalist or plural national committee, the sniper clique, and others, we suffer from deep schisms. If we should survive and you reunify Russia under a crimson banner, we will need to handle the factions and begin to piece ourselves together. If we do not do so, then we shall quickly buckle the moment soldiers from the Western pretenders or worse, the Imperial's lap dogs cross the border. And that would not be very good. Oh, good, they're killing each other. Good, 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 good. Actually, since we're here, resource efficiency gain, convoy. Um honestly. I prefer this one, Soviet Railways. I honestly prefer that one, so we'll see if we can just wait for that one there. More encryption, encryption, stuff like that. Yes. And we're going to go straight to Zukov, so that'll be good for us. Socialism, Bifism, Stalin, uh, conformity in the name of security. It is necessary now more than ever for us to come together. If we are to remain separate, then our divisions will surely be exploited by the treasonous the revisionists and the fascists and purists that seek to tear us down. We must unite in the name of the motherland and against our enemies. Conformity will, as a temporary measure, until we have fully reunified our nation, be enforced by the states so as to ensure that the subversives do not get their way. Uh, actually, this one first. Quickly, the cities. When a country collapsed into warlordism, many farms were abandoned. Though the coal causes suffered, they managed to survive in relatively good condition. The same unfortunately cannot be said for their slave causes. Many are left completely behind, now falling apart entirely in many cases. As we seek to maintain agricultural self-reliance, we will move to restore these soft causes and create a new generation of Soviet farmers, handling the desperate factions. The two primary factions which make up the party in Krasnoyarsk, the sniper clique headed by Vasily Zatsyev, is a more pragmatist force which seeks to work alongside conservative social forces such as the Orthodox Church. On the other hand, there is a plural national committee, consisting of several minority ethnic groups. The plural national committee advocates for decentralization of the Soviet Union and support for further rights of minorities. Some have suggested that we crack down on factionalism, while others have claimed that this division is just partly democracy at work. How should we deal with this? Yes. Yes. These on Grand. Oh, wow. Looks kind of funny. And then we'll do this one. Should be good. Keep building them up. And we get those two millies. Good. Boom, boom. Just in case, because we will run out of guns eventually. So we'll get more artillery, and then support equipment next, and then APCs, perhaps? Maybe some anti air. How much do we get? 0.69 every day. That's not great. Uh, tanks. Uh, reliability. I'm going to research stuff on them either. But the party, army, and state in one. Well, with our situation, we cannot afford to cleanly separate the army and state. Not only do we have to contend with the pretenders in the German Horde or West, but the fascist imperial state occupying the Pacific Coast, and possibly even the Chinese, depending on how the wind blows. Therefore, it's necessary for us to combine the army and state into a singular being. We cannot, after all, have them be separate, so run them back on their own. If we did, we would surely collapse without much effort on the part of our enemies. Pretty much, man, pretty much. This one's probably the best one to do. Because you get more reliability anyway, but we need Gorky, so let's just wait, I guess. I don't have to spend political power immediately up. Good, good, good. 54, good. And vicious anti-Republican purges. There are some within our state who suspect who we suspect of being in line with imperialist, petty bourgeois, Republican Vladivostok. According to our suspicions, we have an infestation of hidden agents waiting for the time to strike against us when they, when we finally stand against American imperialism on Russian soil. As we do not want such things to happen or hinder the war effort, we shall move against anyone suspected of such activities. He who draws the sword against us shall die by the sword. And handling the state. Now that we can finally present ourselves as a serious contender to the reunify Russia, we must work towards perhaps the most important matter, even more than arms and people legitimacy. It is time to move on from our structure as well as proto-state uh, small proto-state within the chaos of Central Siberia's warlord period, and to a genuine government, one which is not plagued by the informality that we face as warlords. Yeah, I'll grab that because we can. We've got political power. Enough political power that we'll be fine. Construction is good. Um, it, it's almost 55. Go with military factory construction speed. That'll be fine. Yeah, we're not... We don't have nearly enough things that we really should have here yet. And, of course, advance from Stalin. Although Stalin was a fool when it came to the Great Patriotic War, it was a simple fact that he was quite wise when it came to government. He put the petty bourgeois and the nationalist reactionaries who sought to tear us apart in their rightful place at the bottom of the social hierarchy. He made clear that the Soviet Union was not going quietly, and with Stalin's political thought and Zhukov's military cap capabilities and abilities, we'll be able to make remake Russia like a phoenix from the ashes. Keep building, keep building, keep building, keep building, come on. We need more. 
You anything here, Zukov? No, no traits, which is weird to have, but... The future of the government is now in a position to be decided by us, and the two major factions have emerged. The first is that of the Kosygin, a sporting more loose policy in anti-Soviet positions with a period of warlordism. Alexei Nikolaevich has argued many alternatives to the true form of communism have emerged, and trying to put them all down would be a fruitless endeavor. The other faction, however, argues that these revisions are nearly as dangerous as the reactionaries, and must be equally dealt with. Who, shall, who side shall we go with? Rule by the consensus of one. Russia's not yet ready for the rule of many. Coming out of a period of great chaos and warlordism, it's plain that democracy will not just work within the current fabric of our nation. Military matters are still paramount, and Marshal Zukov's impeccable command is more necessary than ever. Therefore, for now, it is only sensible to have Marshal the Marshal's role be one which is unrivaled. There's a few, little bit of pee, pee there. It's all right. Oh, I hope Perm goes to war with the... Eh, maybe I don't want them to go to war with the Germans. They have to fit 51 divisions. We have 17 on the border. Yeah, that's not bad for them. And then... Grand Marshal Premier Zukov. Uh, Marshal Zukov was a man deserving of respect and honor more than anyone else in the nation. He saved us from Stalinism, rebuilt our nation, and led us to victory in Central Siberia. It's a sensible thing to have him in total control as we seek to move out of this dark period in our history. And seeing as he's already Premier, there would be no significant change beyond entering or enlarging his military role. Something he's more than capable of handling. At least that's hope so. Just because, you know, if we get... Too many things to do, you get really, really busy, and you can't do everything at full efficiency like everything else, so. You gotta be careful how much you do at one time. Sometimes you do not enough, sometimes you do way too much. Preparing for the push west. We are nearing a monumental hour in the history of our state, as we will soon be taking on the foolish pretended government of Perm, which dares to claim the title Soviet Union, one which we rightfully hold. However, we just must not rush horses. It's first necessary that we build up our forces and prepare to triumphantly face the fools who now sit in Perm. The kingdom will come tumbling down soon enough. Oh, we lose physical power, because it goes up. Get more attack and defense, which is nice. Forever. Oh, the Nicholas of Romania. Well, that sucks. You get a feeling of deja vu? Depends who's asking. Depends who's asking. So, yeah, we can do that. I mean, now we have 18 divisions. We had 17. We have 18 now. Oh, some of the supplies are really bad. Really not good. Alright, then. Well, we'll see. We need logistic companies, though. Level 1 forts. Uh, yeah. Control decrease. I still have fortified positions on the border. When war comes, we must be prepared for the onslaught against us. Therefore, it's necessary to begin to fortify positions where the enemy could possibly make their way across our lands. These forces will repel any enemy with a modicum, modicum of intelligence. As for these lacking such things, for those lacking such things, they will be sent through heck just trying to cross over. Not to mention the soldiers who will be shooting at them, which is a good thing. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. I'm not feeling too concerned. I'm not feeling too hopeful about how well we're going to perform here, but we'll see. Much of them want more roads in Irkutsk. We could use more supply, but still. Bad supply for us means really bad supply, supply for them, so. Just never enough, man. Never enough. We need more arty. Um, that's not good. Not good. Form the Zukov cells around Okrug? Up, around Perm. We must bring about the liberation of Perm from the autocrats who hold it, but we cannot expect to do so unless using proven tactics. We must embed our men within the lands under their control, lying in wait for war to come. At that point, they shall come forward and fight us for a fight, fight for us against the pretenders who sit upon a throne of the bayonets. We shall show them where the lobsters are hibernating, in which we go to war them. Militia divisions, not bad. And then. Begin starting sitting in partisans, Zukovist partisans. One I cannot deny the forces of Perm government are greater than ours, numerically and in terms of equipment. Therefore, we cannot rely on solely conventional warfare to defeat them. Belorussia and Bryansk are both areas we should look to. During the Great Patriotic War, despite being outgunned, outmanned, and beyond enemy lines, they took up arms for freedom and managed to form extensive networks, which have proven disruptive to the plans of the Germans. We shall take inspiration from the theories of irregular warfare. Uh, that's not bad. It's get some more stuff, but still. Division defense on core territory goes down. Yeah, hopefully. Reclaim the Ural Mountains. The time has come for us to move west and liberate the lands which we are valuable to the Russian nation. The Ural Mountains, the Kazakh Steppe, and the Northern Coast, they are all critical to forming United Russia. The time has come for us to get cannibalize a pretender regime which is just the top of the throne of lies and cares not for the Soviet people. For the Malevolent will destroy the crooks and thieves. Well, hopefully we do well here. Good God. I hope we do. And then, 18 divisions. Uh, 55, of course. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, I'll go with you. Why not? And you know what? Let's save. <coughs> Just in case. I can't imagine where you do this extraordinarily well. I just cannot. Uprising your perm. Our efforts have paid off. Our agents of perm have risen up against the revisionist pretenders. Soon we'll be marking, marching to victory. Well, I don't know about that. Well, hopefully, but... Uh... Yeah, I don't I don't have high hopes for that. Um... Yeah... I guess everyone just try to go towards perm, maybe? Go to off maybe? Sverdlosk? So, yeah, good luck, guys. You're definitely gonna need it. We're probably all gonna die over there. But, uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think we do a general attack. It probably wouldn't be very good. They did try attacking us just a little bit earlier, but yeah, I don't know. General attack seems kind of kind of costly. We could try it. Yeah, sixty. Let's going down. Let's going up. Let's going up a little higher too. That one's kind of middle bagish. Yeah, this one seems good to be going down as well. We are doing force defense, which is pretty nice, especially if we can kill off their divisions like that. Eh, we're doing okay-ish. Yeah, they're doing force defense. I'm not necessarily opposed to that. I don't want to do force stack though. I mean, they really want to die there. It's their option, I guess. This does give more army to be doing it like this as well. We don't have so many days to do this. Oh god, they died. Oh, they died really fast. Oh, there goes the rock. And I can't do anything other focuses here, so let's go to war economy. Yay! Finally! Get more millies. Boom. And then boom. Actually. There you go. Oh, you can't actually win there, can you? Oh boy, that's not good. You hold them. Um, you guys go here. If we can, we'll try to move around as fast as possible and try to circle guys. That's probably the only way we're really going to be able to win this war. So, oh, hello. Well, that's not good. Well, god dang it, maybe not. I want you to hold. Let this division do it. Or you just go, or, god dang it. We'll see how far or how fast we can push. 26,000 is quite a few losses already, though. Kind of not good. Do not get in circle, please. God dang it. Well, whatever. Right, so you guys stop doing this. You guys just all hold for now. You guys hold as well. Just defend. Defend, defend, defend. I'll start doing some poke pokey attacks. Crap. That's not ideal. It's fine. They're gonna attack us here and there, whatever. Should be able to win there though. Forcing an attack, you should be able to win. Let them try to attack us first. There you go. Not bad. Could be better, of course. Could be better, but considering what we have, what we don't have, could be a lot worse. Lost 89,000. Lost about a third of what they've lost. Hopefully, that guy's getting quite a bit more experience as well. He does level 7 on attack. That's really nice. Um, we're not that close to capitulating. Yeah, we lost another division. Not bad overall. Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot, lot worse. Wash policies, it's fine. Light infantry is good. Oh, which is better? Light infantry? 4.8, and all of these 400 guns. Versus 560 guns, 4.8. Yeah, no, militia sucks. Um, I'd rather just have the equipment right now and manpower, because we need it really badly. Hmm. So any way we use these tanks to encircle enemies, that is the biggest thing. Boom, boom, boom. Something really simple. To start off. That's fine with us. Oh crap! Supplies really bad up there. It's really not ideal. We take that tile. We take that tile. All right. So be it.
Marcy, where are we at? Oh, that's where the max out. Okay, that sucks. Let's see, let's see. If they want to force the attack, man, you know what? That could be a lot worse for us. They're really forcing the attack. Holy crap. They're a little nutso. Just fine with me. Could easily be able to win there, right? Right? Well, hold on. I said I only wanted one of these guys to hang out. Hang out. Have a good time. Don't kill yourself off too hard. And then you guys go here. And do that. And you all support the attack. And you're going to force it. There you go. And then you guys go. Ah, better just looks good. Help him out. Help him out. There you go. Nice. Don't lose. Don't lose too fast. <clears throat> because you're not allowed to lose yet. Okay. You want to attack? Let's attack. That's good. And what else? Um, maintenance maybe? For these tanks. Oh, good. We killed them all. Good job, guys. Good job. Good, good, good. Well, there you go. They've lost 144,000, which is pretty nice to see. Pretty darn nice, not gonna lie. Concentrated industry is good. Good, good, good. More construction speed as well. And now they're attacking us once again. Alright. Well, let's see what we can do. We lose a tile, we get another tile, not bad. There's gonna be a lot, quite a few hills down here, just deserts, is it? Yeah, deserts. Alright, not bad, not bad, not bad. We'll go right there ish. That would be bad. It ain't much, but it's honest destroying. Boom, boom. Not like that, pretty easy. Hello. What are you doing here, sir? Yeah, sir, good sucks. 42,000. God, I wanted to just do like a general attack or something. Good, good, good. Alright, you're there. Good. Immediately. I love to combine these tank divisions because they're getting very weak. We don't have enough divisions to actually help support. Uh, take them out. Come on. Come on. And good. Actually, go right there, and you can circle that division too. That'd be nice. Good. All right, not bad. Two divisions, two more divisions eliminated. Not bad. Not bad. We have about roughly the same amount of divisions that they do now, which is pretty good. Hang over here, we'll go with Ambusher. Max Entrenchment, just too good to pass up. Alright, so you guys. We're going to do the same sort of thing, because the bonus we have against them right now will be expiring soon-ish. And when you're ready, just go and combine. Oh, they're in active combat, that makes sense. Um, well, they want to keep attacking, I'm kind of okay with that. We're obviously out of equipment, but still. We got plenty of motorized, though. There we go. Mass production's good. Keep going with the. Ooh, 70% is pretty nice. Alright, 60. Oh! Nice. More soft sack? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Go and combine when you get up there. Oh crap, we only have a single tank division now? That sucks. Uh, actually, uh, no, actually, no, I don't want you to do that. Yeah, fighting here. Those three tiles would be good, because they can't come over here, so. Come over here first, thank you. And we're good. Go straight down. I'm out. Just ride, go, 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 go. Ah, now they're attacking us, huh? I see how it is. I see. They attack here. Ah, they did fill that division in. Force it. They're gonna die there. Why can we not win there yet? Is it deep snow? Ah, deep snow sucks. Come on, come on, come on. Oh my god. Hurry the heck up. 
Now, once we do that, we're gonna risk these guys. Good. Three more divisions will go bye bye. Ooh, we got more uh, army XP. Nice. Yes. More tank breakthrough and organization is very good to get. Oh, you were defeated. That sucks. That's all right. And they and we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. We lost quite a few tanks doing that, but that's okay. Actually, don't put them there. Put them like, well, here ish. Ish. All right. What else do we got around here? Manus companies. That'd be good. Mm, signals. I'm sure we really need signals. What are on these tank divisions? Yeah, throw up. Oh, we don't have enough army. it. Ah, <sighs> never enough. You hear it? Nope, that sucks. There are two guys here, huh? But you're moving down there anyways. The Goring Gallery, eh? We lost fifty-five thousand. They lost almost quarter million. Not bad. Do I really want to get involved there when they have that much attrition going on? We'll see. Uh, looking not great right there. Where, you, where did I put you guys? Hmm. I would love to encircle that tank division and destroy it. We might actually do something like this. And now they're attacking us, huh? Alright. Go that direction, you're probably gonna lose here. So you attack Anything else? We have a lot of PP now, which is good to see. We welcome all that extra PP. As long as they're not moving in to kill us, that's fine with us. Hey, look, a tank division. It needs to die. There you go. Very nice. Hang out for now. We'll take another division out. As long as they're not moving. That's all that matters. Also, breaks are good. Mm, RPG's just a little bit ahead of time. Oh, I forgot about this stuff too. There you go. And Sudan gained independence. Good job, Sudan. Should be there very soon. There we go. Now that's beautiful. Oh, we lost that battle. God dang it. Go. Everyone go in. We might be able to have them on the run. They have only 20 divisions back, so we definitely have more than them now. But it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean our divisions are any good, though. That's the thing to remember. My god, we've been using and abusing these tanks really harshly. Oh, crap. That's not good. Um, I got 50%. Keep making more. Keep making more. We're looking bad. We're delaying how much we actually need. Quite a bit. No, that way, that way, that way, that God dang it. You piece of doo doo. You doo doo monster. Just go down there if you can. Let's go here. God dang it. I want to encircle them, these guys, but they keep dying way too fast. Huh. Just go there. Don't worry about it. Let them suffer there. How many divisions they got? Up to 25. We're doing really well, though. We're doing really well. I think we'll have this in the bag. So, there you go. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Yeah. After this one, of course, reforming the Union's government. Now that we're in control of Perm, we must take the efforts to officialize our status as a true heir to the title of the Soviet Union. We must declare a new Soviet government and begin to reach out to the rest of the world, in the hope that they will recognize the government as legitimate. Furthermore, now that we've taken the other communists out of the picture, we must look towards the Pacific Coast, under foreign occupation with not one shred of legitimacy. Absolutely. Go here. Oh, God. You piece of doo-doo monster. Our guys are looking just so bad right now. Go in. We want you to go straight there or something. Obviously, it'd be better if we took the railroad, but whatever. We just want to cut these guys off. Please, cut them off. Post war suspensions, improvements. There you go. Take that too. Cut them off. We've lost how many? Almost 100,000 versus 300,000. That's not bad, actually. It's pretty good. They should be completely out of equipment like us, right? Good, finally. We have these guys cut off. Good, 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 good. Ah, oh, they died. Yes. Yes. 
I thought this be a little more difficult, and honestly, like, it is not easy, but it's not extremely terrible, it's just not great. Don't lose a tank, I mean, if we lose a tank, whatever it is, what it is, but still. Oh! I guess Civil War in, uh, Ukraine. Oh, wow, that was, that was fast. <clears throat> you better give up, son. I don't want to do force attack, or we'll lose a lot of guys, but... I kind of want to do force attack, you know? Keep getting that arm XP. That's super yummy. Get a spared loss. Take all the factories. We need those factories, man. <clears throat> I'm not even making all these other stuff, too. So Don falls ill. That's fine. Whatever. Um, there you go. More millies, of course. Over there. Keep making some roads. I mean, I don't mind making roads. Wounded, whatever. Go right there. Cut those guys off. If possible. Zip off. Um. Let's see. Do you have any other traits besides that? Uh, he's becoming a ranger. Kind of want to wait to get some more slots here before doing anything else. The other stuff is good and all, but I want to wait. Good, good, good. We're not even halfway yet. God dang it. This is extremely devastating. There we go. Got people sticking out, hopefully. So now I want everyone to just like reform. Get back to the line. Consolidate everything we've got. Except for you guys. Why don't you all go here? They should be suffering way more attrition than this. They're completely out of supply. We actually have, like, slight supply here. Slight. Good. Good, good. We should have them done in the bag. We're working conditions. We could do that. We're going to wait just a little bit. Um, go finish it off first. That'll be good. And where are we? Supplies are really god awful, aren't they? Wow, those things are looking really bad, too. Go. And you guys, go down. Go down. Just go straight down if you can. Early auto loaders. That's fine. Do that. Honestly, at this point, I, I don't want to use you anymore. Get over here. Supplies are too bad. I don't want to use you. So, Hey, another encirclement. Nice. Good, good, good. 100,000 losses. Up to 19 divisions max. Extremely good. Extremely good. Oh, my God. Why did you not finish this area down here? You ding-dongs. I literally told you to come down here. Oh, my God. Let me just do this. I don't care about Germany. No one gives a crap about Germany right now. What is this? Industry... Ah, uh, revision. Factory repair speed is not bad, have, actually. Uh, but training, no. Uh, Reinforcement is not bad. Let's get. Since we're still at war, let's go training. You know, we are building more military factories up, too, but still. Keep grinding out that army XP, son. Good. Because there'll be hopefully one less division here, too. Uh, as long as people are moving in there. Hello. Please don't let them get in there first. Oh, come on! Man, AI. We're kind of dumbo sometimes. Let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. Save someone on the equipment right now. Well, that's really god awful. Well, if they want to keep attacking us, I'm kind of okay with that. So, how much more do we need to capitulate them? This is a bit ridiculous, I'd say. Just a wee bit. Actually, go over here. That's probably a supply base. Good. Got that too. Right there. So go destroy. Um, yeah, I don't know what these guys are thinking. They're thinking anything. So you guys go there and go take perm. We should be able to take just just take perm and have a good time with them, right? Well, that division take them out. Good. How are these guys getting so much equipment back? Something I do not understand. Do we take perm? Take perm. Dewey's elected president. That's fine, whatever. Do not get us a circle, you son of a gun. Alright, so these guys are all cut off, which is good. They should be literally getting no supply now. And we have another division. Nice. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How do they get another division of two divisions of perm? 
How are we doing down here? Well, we lost. This is stupid. Force it. Probably a bad idea to do that, but whatever. Go around him then. Look at that, there you go. Wounded, so be it. My god, I mean, this is a bit ridiculous how much you have to take out a perm. Are you kidding me, man? This needs to be, like, slightly less. Slightly less. That's so much. More war bonds, I don't care if it hurts our war propaganda. Um, military factors are coming along still. It's good. It's very good. Good. We're looking actually not too bad now. We'll do that, we'll do that, we'll do that. Jesus Christ, can you not take them out? No, they cannot. Quite unfortunate. Oh, crap, that's not good, too. Come on, this should be done already. My God. No, this definitely needs a slight rework. Like, come on. This is too much. This is way, 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 way too much. We're almost at the German borders, for the love of God. We're literally almost at the German borders. <sighs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank God, that's too much, man. That's too much. Oh, let's take like refineries because we can't. Now I'll rush to the other side of the border. Let's, let's do that. Let's jump in. That's good. Preparing for the push west is d gone, which is fine with us. Marshal retains his power. You bet he does. Marshal Zukov still leads his state, and as leader, he can determine what is best for him. We will not be dispa displaced as a nation's primary figure by some fool from Leningrad who has no clue for military matters, especially not in our current position of being surrounded by enemies. The Marshal retain every bit of power and continue to govern us as he has before. Only he can lead us to restore greatness. Yes. But political power, stability, not bad. We'll take it. Now, do that. That's fine. Our guys are just so flipping weak. Yeah, that's that's not easy. That's definitely not easy to do. I'll do that one first. Um, just so we can get that one done. Okay. Now we get all this stuff. Yeah, that's good. Oh, now we have more military factories? Jesus Christ. Save my soul. Good. And then the Political Bureau convenes. With the Western lands under our control, and political and industrial disputes sorted out, we must not convene a meeting of the Political Bureau. What well, has changed since our humble beginnings in Krasnoyarsk? We have gone from a small group considered secondary to the big dogs to being closer to reunification than any other, but the fire is not yet over. The Imperialist Puppet Republic of Fascists and Petty Bourgeois still remain in control of our Pacific Coast. Our divisions remain apparent. We must work to solve these issues as we inaugurate a new Political Bureau. A couple comments included. Um, am I going to react to the Divided States of America by the Kaiser Cat Cinema? Uh, probably not, just because I usually don't, so. Yeah, probably not going to, but, well, maybe eventually. I don't know. If I did that, I'd probably have to show my face eventually. I'm like, eh, we'll wait for that one. We'll wait. Actually, Kirito goes... Oh, ooh, they're stuck on that one. Okay, whatever. I, do, I would like to get some civvies being created, because we do need more of an industry, so that'd be nice. We'll do that, too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At least we got it here in time, though. Uh, try to fight perm as fast as possible. That was one other comment. Which, well, I guess now we're perm. We've become this thing we swore we were going to destroy. All right. Oh, look at this. This is kind of nice. The marshal retains his power. Dear Gregory Konstantinovich, Premier Marshal of a great nation is best of the crooks and liars which seek to displace his position as a sovereign of a great union. Now, as we near the end of the great era of fire, which has play long plagued our nation, we must begin to make moves to ensure that the new nation, our new nation, will be one that can last for decades to come. Great. Last of the mess, military, economic, state. Uh, what the future? Look into the past. Huh. Monthly population. Soviet tractor. Soviet bus. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ooh, I like that one. Let's go over matters of the military. The military is undoubtedly the most important or necessary organ of our union. As we move to reunite it all under our banners. However, as, as with anything, there's not merely one way of dealing with it, and as one may expect, the different factions of our government have taken different positions on how our mighty workers and peasants' Red Army would be best run. Nice. Keep making the millies and civvies and stuff like that, so... Go. Research. Research. We must research. Good. Do we even have any planes? Oh, I got some trains. No, well, we're trying to make some. We're definitely trying to make. What the heck? Oh, this is from the. when we had mass defections. Oh, God. Oh, no. Just get rid of all of them. I don't want to deal with that stuff. Uh, but now I can pull some planes, maybe. Pre war planes? Okay. Well, we'll gladly accept those. Definitely could use some more tank divisions, though. Pre-war strats. Oh, wow, we got quite a few casts. I love that. 
Let everyone share some casts. Yes, please. Sharing is caring. Hmm. Nice. Matters of the military. Yes, please. Oh, restore order to the Russian Republic. Well, that'd be kind of a waste, wouldn't it be? Muscovine, Caucasus. Yeah, I'm going to take some time to make sure we're actually ready for that stuff. Uh, we're at war, so it's minus 30%, so we'll be fine without doing that. Oh, yes. Fourth research site. Yes, 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 yes. Military construction after that. What are we going to do with that then? Radar? Maybe. Artillery? Oh, God, we're still using old, outdated artillery. So, we did this one. A Russian oriented army. An army which reflects our union is necessary, and why should it be anything that is not leadership by the majority of those who are skilled? Such is how any modern army is run, and it should be how ours is run as well. It's not an issue that ethnic Russians are far more skilled than these minorities, but a simple coincidence. If we wish to maintain a strong force, then we cannot be pandering, but rather we must be hard at work. Five days left, not bad. Ooh. Social peace. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. Matters of the military. Uh, all are agreed on the importance of rebuilding our armed forces to defend ourselves from reactionary power and retake our place in the world, but there's a debate on how exactly to strengthen the army. Some emphasize quantity. Calling for broad and mass conscription argue that the battles are won through overwhelming force, and a large army is necessary to provide the strength and numbers to overwhelm the enemy and prevail. On the other side, there are those who see the quality as more important. Wanting tighter conscription, they argue that an army is only as good as the men in it, and discipline for prof professionalism and skill in combat are most crucial. They promote focusing on improved training of elite forces. We're using both domestic and foreign experience, how should our military reconstruction program proceed? We need better men. Oh, we just completed immediately. Oh, that's nice. War sport, status of women. Ah, oh, the Red Army, uh, Orthodox chaplains. While we, while we must maintain a state without religion, it is necessary to note that many within our glorious motherland, and even within our army of workers and peasants, remain faithful to the Orthodox Church. Thus, it would be it would do no harm to us if we were to insult chaplains of of the church for the Red Army regiments. They could be described as com commissars in their own way, working to bring their faithful to battle against the fascist horde. Oh, expand conscription. Eh, that seems okay. Matters of economics. The economic situation in our union is unfortunately quite poor. With years of suffering brought upon our country by the fascist invasion or subsequent division at the hands of those weakened within weakness with in their hearts, we've lost much of our former industrial greatness. As we move forward, however, we shall make moves to bring back what is lost, and that means we shall prosper once more. As we're going to build, build, build ourselves up a lot. As much as I want to keep making civvies, keep making some millies as well for now, too, because we definitely need them. Turn back up to Moscow, order some convoys, now we're good. Uh, integrate a lot of places, we will eventually. Um, not that ahead of a time. Can you guys just try to win here? Yeah, you could, generally can. There you go, try that. You guys lead, that's fine. I mean, we lost 3,000 versus 15,000, it's not bad. How strong are these guys? They don't have that many divisions compared to us, but still. Oh, that plays you. Solution, let's see. National populace, huh? Social Democrat this time. They don't have a lot of manpower either, so. We should do okay, get some, and we need the army XP as well, so. Mm. We are still in battle. Mass charge, alright, sounds us. And matter of economics. Followed up with matter of state. We face a moment which is pivotal in the restoration of our motherland. Uh, the course we shall chart in the years to come, it's a choice we will ultimately affect every bit of our nation, from the greatest general to the most impoverished peasant. The time for choosing is now, and the two roads lie ahead of us. Which shall we choose? Well, I don't think we really get a choice. We kind of did what we are going to do, so... War bonds? Oh, we're going to need them. Alright, why not? Because we can, right? Because we can. Keep grinding that army XP, we're doing okay here. Yeah, I'm not going to have you guys move, because you're just too weak. Way too weak. These guys are not bad. Oh, yeah, they're not great. Um, logistics. Yeah, definitely get logistics on them. Definitely, absolutely have to get logistics. Especially when we're fighting over here in the far east. So, yeah. No if and or buts. It has to be done. But unfortunately, we're out of coffee. Uh, someone says in TNO plays Tomsk Basilards, and you must fight for the far east first. Oh. Well, I don't know about that. Matters of economics. As of the resurgence of all young status further discussed, the question of how our economic policy should proceed is being debated within our government. While all are united to in our commitment to socialism, there are significant disagreements on what exactly is the best method to bring it about. Orthodox Marxists argue in favor of our Bolshevik roots, setting the primacy of industrial development in Marxist economic theory. They favor a focus on industrialization, the interests of our traditional backers, the urban working class. 
and the development of our industrial and urban centers. They argue for a continuation of Lenin and Stalin's approach to rapid industrialization and the finishing of their incomplete project. On the other hand, others call for a change in strategy. Said the catastrophes that have beset the USSR in decades since its creation, they call for more agrarian focused economic strategy. To the agrarian socialists, the peasant is the real backbone of the Russian economy, and agriculture must be reformed and modernized first before an advanced economy can be built on top of it. Whichever strategy is chosen, the party must come to a consensus and be united behind its decision. Back to the land. Nice. Uh, women rejecting Kostigin's Western strategy. Uh, so, let's see. The truth is that we cannot rely on the Marxist theory as the sole basis of our nation. Instead, we must look to what is known to work and apply within the circumstances that we currently face. We simply cannot rely on the work of Marx, who was, as one remember, may remember, a German who knew little about Russia. In our current situation, we must turn to some revisionism in the name of survival, rejecting Kostigin's Western strategy. Comrade Alexei Nikolaevich, dear as he may be to our party members, is incorrect on in many things. He is too much of an idealist. We cannot accept the realities and limitations of our situation. And he cannot accept that the West, strangled by anti-communism, has no great desires to assist us. We will tell Comrade Alexei Nikolaevich here now, you are wrong. Life awaits you. One by one, the company commander encountered all the people who had gathered today so that they could include new soldiers in their ranks, who would serve well in the further battles against all the enemies across Noyos. There were 50 of them, at least in this group. And all the names were already written down to then. Check if they were physically ready to withstand the challenges of the war that lay ahead of them. And before the challenges of war, of course. Uh, it was considered that if they were ready to die in a large number of cases, and for everyone you knew about them to forget that they ever existed. The commander weighed the soldiers from head to toe, noting all their external features, not caring about the internal ones, because every normal person knew that a person meant little in the coming war, and that no one who adapts himself to an animal that ruthlessly tears the neck of his enemies to survive. And when they know all that is required of them, they will have to meet the other side of the bullet that will collide with their heads. So the bullet will turn into a rain of blood that will that will color the snow that is under their feet, and when he will melt, there will soon be no one to remember them, to forget that they even existed as soon as it was needed. The religious clique was forced to acknowledge the supremacy of the spirit. Guys, I think we're doing quite well here. Oh, you can get more attack. You can get more attack. How are we doing over here? Oh. That's better. He's definitely learning, which is great to see. Uh, losses. 14,000 versus 42,000. Yeah, this is, the Russian Republic is not easy to play as. None of these Russian states are super easy to play as, but matters of state. But they're sitting now in a good, stable condition. Some disagreements have arisen with, from within the government, as we are faced with a decision long put off for, for then relative unimportance. A Soviet state must be established off of, of one out of two possible foundations. One is to develop it based on Marxist theory for the ideal uh, social state, which is the more ideologically firm of us favor. Or it can be developed off of the national idea of a Russian state, with the very history of Russia itself serving as a state's foundation, favored by the more pragmatic and patriotic of us, no matter which we choose, of course. The basis of the justification of our state's existence will have the elements of the other. But every government will naturally have its own factor, favorites, and we are no exception of this. The past holds the key to success. Uh, restating the Gulag system, with the reclamations of the lands which we were formerly under the control of revisionists and fools, we found a great mess on our hands. Our union is full of people unwilling to cooperate or renounce their harmful and parasitic views. It is necessary, therefore, for us to send them away, in fact. We could always use a road going from Norals to Kreisel. Kreisel, yes, yes. Why not? Keep building, we're looking actually not completely terrible now. Artillery, we need way more artillery. No, that's okay. Get plenty of guns, one, two, three. Uh, go down to two. So we can share the wealth here, and then share the wealth there, and then share the wealth there. That'd be good. You go up to three, that's fine. So, not bad. Keep making, keep building, keep building, because the Germans will have a lot that they've created. And we're going to need pretty much exterminate them all. Go right there, guys. Let's go right there, if you can. Not bad. Oh, Kostogin criticized. Ever since he got his position, Kostogin was not that li liked inside the party. As attempts at reforms and antagonism against the authoritarian wing of the party has been a cause of great criticism from those who would decry him as either a wolf in the sheep's clothing, a reactionary spy sent to undermine the restoration of the true Soviet g government or union, or a sheer incompetent fool who can't be trusted to run a country. And a recent spree of unsuccessful reforms have lately seemed to legitimize those concerns for the reform. For more and more party members, with attention coming to a head at the latest party meeting, the atmosphere couldn't be any rougher for this man. As various displeased party members kept rambling on about his failures, shutting him up promptly whenever he tried to explain himself, one comrade's words in particular stuck out to him. Keep this up, Alexei, and your work here is done. He was right. If you can't find a way to please the party's efforts at reforming the system, will be all for nothing. But how? How? 
Acknowledging Sirot's importance. Comrade Ivan Alexandrovich is a man whose importance cannot be understated by any means. He controls his security forces, protects her people from reactionary and revisionist threats, and assures that her people only hear the things of truth. He is a man whose critical donations continue existence, and we must make sure that the people are aware of his benevolent, benevolent efforts. He's a benevolent god. Probably won't get better planes, too. Engineers, yes, please. Good, good, good. Apologies for talking so fast. I'm just so used to talking so fast at this point. All right, speed, speed, speed. 25,000 versus 100,000, basically. Nice. Got a shells. Yes, please. We can grab some of that, too. We really wanted to. Ah, good luck, Justin. Yes. The role of the proletarian autocracy. The Soviet Union is fundamentally, constitutionally, a dictatorship of the proletariat. It is something enshrined in everything, from the smallest of factories to our motherland's very name. But yet, in the chaos of things, it seems as if we have lost our way. This wrong shall be righted, as we shall once more establish ourselves as a dictatorship of the proletariat. How are we doing here? Doing okay? Well, doing alright, I guess. Head on. Oh my gosh, that is so many divisions over here. Holy crud, daddies. Fine, whatever, do that. Um, go eight. Laos and Taiga, after a painful patrol in which they found themselves hungry and tormented by the cold, the Red Army soldiers managed to break through the strong blizzard in which they felt, successfully saving their lives. They met with the captain of the Red Army company, who, according to his speech, showed great piety, which led to the fact that he was very religious orthodox. Through conversation and story, walking through a remote Siberian tundra, they came across a very suspicious couple looking for firewood, which, uh, which in translation meant that they needed wood to survive the cold of winter. Encountering the two of them, the husband and wife, both very weak in the body because they seemed hungry from the weather and the physical conditions in this environment in which they found themselves. Only a few hours passed, and they managed to get in touch with this married couple, who in turned out to have children in this remote wasteland in Tundra. During this patrol, hunger and tired, hungry and tired, the Lykovs uh, received them into their house where they could get some food and that they also had for themselves in very small quantities. Talking to them, the traveler could hear that the religious captain praising them, knowing a lot about them. Talking about how the brother, the father of this family was shot by a random patrol in 36, so they could then escape from their hometown, coming to this tundra where they still live in poverty, without enough food and without enough water. They left their house the next day, although they looked at each other with their suspicions, or suspicious eyes, when they met them. They could continue on their path that they had originally planned to end the patrol, leaving in their memory, the memory of this family that received them, and who survived all these years alone in their destiny, which is so determined for them. We can learn a lot from them. Yes. Yes. Four days left, not bad. Not bad. Keep going, keep going. Get us more army XP. My god, do we need more army XP. Keep going. Meeting with Seraph, outwardly, the party is fully unified under its leader Zukov. In truth, Zukov's influence is far from absolute, and other figures in the party have have their own power blocks and agendas, of course. Among them, Ivan Serov has become one of the strongest, holding significant influence in the autonomous intelligence and security agencies of the Krasnoyarsk government. Zukov, being an army man, this side of the state did not lie fully within his reach, and as potential rivals instead stood as a possible threat. A name of unity, therefore, and to make sure the party and, name, party and state is strong in the face of foreign threats such as rival governments and ultimately the great German enemy, Zukov is determined to bring Serov on side. Serov is clearly too strong to just bully in submission, but Zukov is confident that with a little previous discussion, or private discussion, a compromise can be found between them. Behind the closed doors of the meeting room, there is back and forth, but ultimately an agreement is found. What this agreement entails will remain quiet, even to the upper echelons of the party. However, with a successful conclusion, all are simply glad that the party and state is now significantly more unified, and none are more glad than Zukov himself. Compromises must be made. Launch well, the investigation. Might as well, right? Might as well. What's there 22 divisions left? What are you guys doing? Can you guys beat these guys up? Beat them up. Maybe find enemies, beat them up. Beat the crap out of them. Just beat the snot out of them. Snot will be beating it out of you. Whether you like it or not. Good. We're looking really good here now. You can kind of tell where we started to build ourselves up quite a bit. Uh, make sure we got plenty of roads here, too. So really, when we go to war with the Germans, they have a modifier that really hurts them after they can't really take our, our land. So we need to make sure that we stall them out as long as possible, and then we'll be able to win relatively easily. So The initial struggle against the German menace is going to be difficult, but as long as we hold out, as long as we can hold out, that's all that matters. A lot of green, good, good, good. Hopefully get another land auction done before we actually end up going to war with the Germans, though. That'd be nice. Mole industry, please. 50% is not bad. 60% is even better, though. But 70% is the best one I see so far. I don't care if it's turning war sport. I really don't care. Roll of the Batarian autocracy. 
and the sanction of the church. The Orthodox Church is an old institution and one supported by the majority of Soviets despite our attempts to stamp it out and our inability to realize that this cost us the war and millions of souls. For the time being, we must end all sanctions on the Orthodox Church and bring forth the might of the faithful, for they will fight even harder knowing that he is on our side against the invasive fascist menace. And a new constitution. A solemn constitution is a document which can no longer... Oh, my bad. My apologies. Oh, boy. Yay, we won. No longer uh, <clears throat> uh, be applied to our motherland without a guilty conscience. The times have changed our nation as well and greatly. This constitution, however, remains the same a relic, a fossil of our mo most humiliating failure. We must begin the drafting of a new Soviet constitution, one which will be up to date and fitting for our union as great as ours. Yura! Beautiful, my friends. Ura, ura, ura. The hanging tree. Oh, look at this. A Red Army Patrol mercilessly beat people who managed to escape from Baratia, risking their lives to escape, but was betrayed by a small clue that marked them as refugees of the Russian fascist party led by Konstantin Rozhevsky. After the arrest, the patrol received an order from the command HQ and from Zukov himself, who was informed after this incident to send all these refugees to a hill where a trial of their calm criminal activities and general harassment could take place, which her party advocated, led by ten army red soldiers, personally selected from the main command of Krasnoyarsk. The procession arrived on a hill on which there was a large tree which could accommodate at least fifty adults. Wow. The ropes were ready to do their jobs as the soldiers prepared everything so that this could be completed as soon as possible. Brought to a tree. Beaten and mistreated, they were able to finally taste their own medicine, which they had practiced before. Everything was finally prepared so that anyone who had any chance of surviving could now watch the world with a noose around its neck, which tightens the trachea and prevents the flow of air from reaching the lungs, feeling everything burning inside him as, he has, as if he had swallowed a flame, feeling life leave him not only by allowing him him to enter the body to finally stop the struggle of fate, when the hands became shaky, when the legs have no life to move, and when eyes look lost without life in you. Burning heck, fascist creatures. No time for drinking. Before we do that, though, let's see. What do we have here? More divisions? Yes, please! Because now we have to be ready for the uh, uh, German menace, hopefully. Actually, who else can we take out first? Um, ooh. Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan. Oh, yes, please. Supplies are going to be very bad when we do this, but that's okay. Uh, actually, you know what? Take you first, because you're pretty small. Oh, crap, why did I do that? That was a waste of command power, but it doesn't really matter. There you go, and there you go, too. We're going to go to war with these guys. And you guys. And you guys come over here, too. It's all going to be one big old party, right? One giant fat party. Nice. 500 PP, not bad. Uh, work and improve working conditions. We do that, too. Uh, oh, yes. Do this stuff first. Yes. Yes. The fall of the Duma and Vladivostok was followed by a march of the Red Army, after which Zukov came on horseback, while Kostigin followed him, entering the Duma, which was only open a half an hour after the battle with the Red Army subsided, Zukov noticed something he had not seen for a very, very long time. A snack machine like the ones existed in America, and Zukov knew very well what else was in those machines. I haven't seen these for a long time, Zukov said quietly when Kostigin entered the Duma quarter to find Zukov trying to activate the cam with the money he always had in his pocket. Huh. Uh, Marshal Kostigin asked quietly as he approached Zukov, uh, what's the problem? I don't want to sound cheeky, but what the heck are you trying to do? I'm trying to remember my younger days, when I could still enjoy some kind of luxury. Zukov says he poured money into the apparatus, taking out two Coca-Colas. If you're already taking two, I'm not drinking it. Why don't you want to drink Coke? That's fantastic, Zukov exclaimed almost happily as Kostogen ran a hand through his face. I don't want to waste my liver on that, Zukov shook his head disapprovingly, and taking two Cokes handed him one. Trust me when I tell you you won't regret Kostogen. Won't well, regret it, Kostigin. Passing the coke, which Kostigin took unhappily in his arms, opened it and listened to the sound of her sweet sound. He drank a little, but thought to himself, What would I do just to drink lemonade instead of this crap? God help me, my waistline is expanding. <laughs> well, maybe he didn't say that, but you, you get the idea. Get down there as fast as possible. Y'all will do great. The tank's looking not terrible now. Since we have that, uh, yeah, we don't have to use those tanks. Um, let's see. Get more APCs and go with another tank destroyer. Or just tank. Uh, that's almost 50 organization. That's not bad. Go 18 combat with, and that gives you even more armor, which is nice. That Now, that's not bad. Throw in uh, maintenance and, and logistics. That's good. There you go. Now, that's not a bad division. We want to make more of those types, even though tanks are just so goddamn expensive. Oh, goodness, so expensive. That costs quite a, quite a bit of army XP, which does suck. Which does suck so much. Alright, so since we're down here anyways, just go and get ready to... Yes, yes. Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. Oh, they're not even there yet. Well, oh, crap, that's not good. Uh, everyone, go fast. Go fast. Speed, speed, speed. You are speed, even though they don't look... Eh, they look okay. Nice. Group capacity, that's fine with us. And after that one, it is... Ooh, 58, so come here. Better AKMs, why not? There you go. Move, 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 move. I might have done that one a little bit too early. 
And we just ended the sanction of the church, which is nice. Whoopsie! Maybe did that one just a wee bit too early. Uh, whatever. And nuka Soviet Constitution, because, uh, why not? Well, that infantry division is suffering from supply issues and can't move around too much, which does kind of suck. It would have helped probably if I gave you orders, actually. No wonder you're not moving in. And moving in as well, which is good. All right. Investigating our autarky potential. There's no radical concept to support the total self-sufficiency of our union without reliance on foreigners who inevitably attempt to ruin our social system. We must look into the ideas of getting back on our feet and pursuing the true socialist dream. One where we're not relying upon foreign handouts and bailouts. All right, they died way faster than I thought they would. Thank you. Do we integrate them? Not yet. Oh, that sucks. Well, not bad. Yeah, we go to war with these guys. We go to war with the entire German menace, which is not going to happen yet. Not going to happen. Even though I wouldn't go to war with the Tajik people. I would be at peace with that. That's fine. I was reintegrating the Far East. Ah, why not? I was still on the investigation going. Ooh, we got four days left. Submit a report on the conclusion. After an exhaustive period of investigation, our intelligence officers have reached an authoritative conclusion regarding Stalin's true fate. When the German advance columns approached, or advancing columns approached, Stalin's evacuation column was devastated by the Luftwaffe. With the fear of the German soldiers reaching their positions and the fear of being captured alive, Joseph Stalin and his personal secretary committed suicide. Due to the fact that the communications equipment were destroyed, by the time of their suicide, they were unaware of the fact that the Red Army successfully stopped the German advance all afterwards. Their bodies were cremated, and the remainder of Stalin's sec security details were either joined by the front or committed suicide. The truth shall set us free, and the new Soviet Constitution. Under the watchful eyes of Zhukov and the decision of the Supreme Soviets, a new Soviet Constitution has been adopted. A far better improved addition from its historic counterparts. May it last for years to come. Is that it? Focus on the Gearing sector. The Gearing sector makes up the heart of any functioning society, after all. We cannot ignore the fact that when we last sought to govern, our position was significantly undermined by famines, both unintentional and otherwise. Furthermore, the rest of the world has advanced in terms of agricultural technology. We must double down on our efforts and ensure that no Soviet citizen shall ever, 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 ever grow hungry. More savings instead of uh, other things? Yes. For now. I don't know there's a 60% there, but whatever. I'm honestly not super concerned about it right now, so. There we go. Oh. There you go. So you guys, just take one group and just go like right there. There you go. Everyone else, go like there. That's Croatia. Because the Germans are going to come knocking at us eventually, so. You just got to be ready. And you guys, just go right there. How much equipment are we missing? We need more arty and more main battle tanks, but what else is new, you know? Oh, are they... Wait, wait. Oh, yeah, they actually have a dock here. Look at that. Huh. Oh, we need to make some more planes, too, but whatever. We'll get there eventually. That'll be good. Oh, we're looking really good on this. Uh, I don't want to lower it by too much. Lower it by five. And autarky are in Russia. And the debate over our economic strategies. A few details are controversial within the parties or economic relations with the outside world. Having grown disillusioned with the world beyond that, has fallen to such depth of depravity. Some are calling for a policy of autarky going forwards. Russia is, after all, vast land rich in all kinds of resources. We have no need for the goods and products of foreign lands. And avoiding any level of reliance on the fascist or capitalist nations will ensure that we can never again be caught off guard as we were when the capitalists made peace with Germany and left them faces alone. Others insist that the benefits of trade are too great to give up. Our incomplete industrial buildup after under Stalin was facilitated in large part through trading expertise sharing with the West. And economic growth is much easier to achieve when there is freer access to foreign markets, for imports and exports, and access to foreign expertise and investment in our own economy. The basis of any future socialist Russia, therefore, cannot be built on autarky, but must be integrated with the global economy to strengthen our state and improve the lives of our people. Neither side of this heated ideological debate is likely to be convinced, but if the party and nations be reunited, one, must, one side must win. We must turn, not turn our backs on the world. We must provide our, for ourselves. Um, where are we at for this? Because we have enough manpower, honestly. Yeah, we have more than enough, so I'm not really concerned about it. We have a lot of cores, though. We must not turn our backs on the world. This one seems like a cost of route, so we'll go with this one. Total mobilization. Adopting new power sources. As we seek to modernize our union, we must look towards a goal which has long been in mind and sight, total electrification. The goal of past Soviet governments undermined by the destruction of our union, must remain a large and important aspect in our policy. The Soviet citizens of the future will look upon these days with fascination, wondering how anyone could have lived without electricity, which I understand. A fuel silo? Why do we get a fuel silo? If anything, a synthetic refinery would be quite literally a new power source, or at least a power source. A fuel silo just holds your stuff. Why? I mean, no understand. There we go. That's good. There you go, too. Good, good, good. 
and I'll go to them. Kill them off. Have a good old time. Go here and do that too. Um, and go there too. Actually, if anything, what's supply like on the lines right now? It's going to be really bad down here. Obviously, there's a supply base right there. But just in case we can't get it yet, because we'll be putting a lot of soldiers here anyways. Come up here. And then do this. Bing da bong. Thank you. There you go. We're at war. That's fine. Nope, not that we really care about. And then new Soviet tractor. The main source of our national pride is no car, truck, or bus. It is a humble tractor. Oh, thank you, Tajik State. It is a humble tractor. By which people live, planting their crops in the fields of a great union as the red sun shines above. This is the livelihood of honor, and one which we shall strive to protect by all means. The greatest way to do this is to bring into the modern era and create the new tractor of the masses. Nothing like a good old tractor for everybody here. Okay, so now, since we got this done... Actually, since you're here, you're going to do this. Supplies. And now you all do this. And we're going to do something like this. By the time we go to war with the Germans, we are not going to have enough divisions, probably. I'll be honest. So, let's see. We Go all the way around here. Go a little crazy. Uh, we just don't have enough divisions for this. No, come on, game. Come on. Uh, so many flipping tiles. Oh my god, stop with all the tiles. Oh, so many tiles. It's a map game with a lot of tiles. Look at that. We can't even. We don't have enough divisions to cover the line yet. Separate you in half. Thank you. There you go. Join right there. Led by. No. Uh, actually, that guy wouldn't be too bad, but still. Let's go to 12. Train. We got more than enough manpower, though. Total mobilization is really nice. Let's make sure that we're making one. Oh. Saving Millie all the time. You guys are doing fine. And more warfare. Oh, I love it. I love it a lot. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Richard Moscow, the capital. Georgia. Oh, you do it. But they Oh, we, these guys are there for some. Okay, so we tracked her. Followed up with uh, the women. The status of woman is quite the touchy one. While we support total equality of the sexes, without a doubt, many men would not be able to control themselves around women, even in the professional setting of the military. The matter has caused significant debate among the factions of our leadership, and we must settle it once and for all. Oh, they really are going to kill everybody, aren't they? Or Russian Republic. Oh, the time to move east. Where do you, where do you move to east? Operation February. Well, all right. Well, okay. We gotta get that one done. Now we need more political power, which kind of does suck. It's alright though. Mm -hmm. There you go. Keep building up them spy bases, cause my god, we gonna need them. That goes Bulgaria. Are they making just like? Oh, they're playing as Goring. So the oh, why is, why is Romania green? Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, that's going to be one heck of a tough fight to do for the new old Nung. Oh, God, no. Oh, Hungary is somehow kept out of it for now, but... Tractor Factory opened in Svedlosk. Today at noon, uh, in the industrial complex of Svedlosk, the workers were all given leave to attend the grand opening of the Cosmos Agricultural Machine Plant, also known as the KZSM. The massive, almost 120,000 square foot uh, or meter factory was space was designed in the early years of the Zukovite government, and after many months of hard work and research gathering, it was ready to open for production. The local Komosol members attended the opening and their leader, Nikolai Belinsky, gave a speech. My comrades and I are proud of not only to have this complex named after our wonderful organization, but also have to participate in the construction. Indeed, all members of the chapter assisted in this child-friendly portions of construction. We were taught by knowledgeable comrades in the designing of the facilities, and the manner in which the cement was laid in the minutiae of everyday work. We're proud to have helped further our wonderful country and our wonderful belief. Premier Zukov was busy during the time of the opening with affairs of state and sent the first secretary, who was given the honors of cutting the ceremonial red velvet. Once cut, the first shift of the workers stormed into the building to begin the workday. Wonderful, I wonder if we could convert it to make tanks. And officially blacklist Ukrainian officers. The Siberian Ukrainians consist of a significant minority in our nation, and one which is potentially dangerous to our motherland's revival, but unfortunately, we cannot place an official ban on these subversive bandit banderets for the military. Such a thing would be deprivation of the constitutional rights. We can assure, however, that these swan will never be allowed in by making sure that no recruiter will ever accept them into our great, great, great Red Army. Beautiful. I do own Perm now, so technically, Gorky would be good. Motorizer. We're doing okay on Motorizer. Our technology, you do get flat 10% reliability, which is really nice. I'll go that one. Gorky. Current cost of just influence is none. Good. Good. Build, build, build. Build, for the love of God, build. Supply-wise, we're looking okay-ish all around here. Oh, except up here. That's not good. Um, you know what? Okay, go on there. The status of women. Another area of debate. 
uh, relating to the armed for, for, forces as the over the role of women in the, within them. While women served important roles throughout the military during the Great Patriotic War, the extent to which they should continue to do so has come under scrutiny. Our opponents argue that women's roles should be expanded and more women brought into the military, perhaps even through conscription, to boost the number of uh, personnel available. Currently, and certainly, it would help alleviate the shortages of manpower following the devastating losses in the last war. This is a controversial among many, though, who see women's roles on the domestic front as being of greater importance, and want to see women's frontline roles either remain as they are or to be further restricted. Let's put it together. We need homes and factories. That's a more conservative one to go, and I think Zukov's more conservative. Yeah, I've expanded conscription. It's not hard to see that the times ahead will be even tougher battles than the ones we've already fought. If we wish to survive, then we'll have to expand conscription to encompass even more souls willing to fight and die for Great Motherland. Only in this way we'll be able to survive and liberate the whole of our union. There we go. That's what we want to get. Actually, go this way. More organization. Ooh, 20% less supply consumption. That's nice. But we are building up more roads, so let's do that one first. We can get more manpower later on. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. This will be done very soon too, so. Good. Thick roads. On Thrace. What the heck? Thrace exists? Well, not for a long, much longer. And they're dead. What's this? Montenegro. Nice. Goodbye. Well, it's not nice. It's not good. We definitely gonna need some anti-air here too. Transports, casts. Not bad. There we go. Our time to move east. For too long, our Pacific coast has been under the control of American imperialists, who seized it from our hands and declared it a republic, the successor to the petty bourgeois Kerenskyites, who fell in 1917. The Vladivostok regime presents a difficult foe, but one which would be far easier for us to take on than the fascist invaders. We must begin to draft plans for seizing these lands from foreign control and assure the power of the people. Pretty much, man, pretty much. Well, so what are you doing here? We have plenty of that, plenty of that, plenty of that, plenty of that. Uh, we need to go up a little bit more. We need more rubber. We need more tanks. We definitely need way more planes, though. Way, 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 way more planes. So you're making more millies as well. I can import some more. We have enough factories now that I feel pretty good about doing this. Thank you, Malaysia. We only get 0.85 every single day, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, we demand Corellia. We need to control Moscow, so we got to wait till all that stuff is done first, which does suck, but whatever. Conscription. AKMs. Nice. RPG 7s? Yes. Aiding in Sirov's agents. <clears throat> Comrade Ivan Alexandrovich is a great man, and his efforts to infiltrate the white forces cannot be commended enough. However, it is clear that within the current amount of aid he has, he will not be able to succeed in his mission to a large extent. Let us give our command, our comrade a helping hand and cooperate in the name of defeating the bourgeois imperialist. Absolutely. Keep building up, keep building up. Getting that supply base done will be really beneficial, because right now it's looking not too good. Even though it could be looking, honestly, even worse. It could be looking actually a lot worse. So over the, other than that, we're looking definitely okay. Yeah, not bad. Do we have anything else here? Seems like we might. Uh, we have enough political power, though. Definitely need more, though. Oh, do that one. We could definitely use... Oh, weekly change is going up. It's good, because we got that one. Nice. Gotta move east. Nice. Constructing the sympathetic groups. It's come to our attention that the Far East is not without communists. Several minor, disparate movements exist, which will admittedly not prove much help in our efforts to liberate the Pacific Coast from American imperialism, but it is help, nonetheless, and that is what matters. We shall send in agents to forge ties with these left wing groups and help them fight for us. Absolutely. Oh, we got the supply bases done. Nice. Any issues here? Any issues? Maybe here, potentially. So that's not good still. Um, keep making stuff like that. Real simple for everybody. There you go. Something real simple. We're still building plenty of civvies, which is fine for now. We're going to keep going on two millies from here on out, probably. That's not bad. Uh, go to three, maybe, because we can still use some more. New Gulag system? Nice. Keep building, 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 build as fast as you possibly can, right? Pokrushkin? I'm not Pokrushkin. Pokrushev? Nice. Good stuff. I don't want to see his interceptors, though. I don't care about this stuff. No, thank you. Medium tanks. We don't believe in that. Air transport's fine. Strategic bombers will keep. None of that either. Operation February. The time has come for us to bring about the end of the petty bourgeois state established by the American imperialists, which lies in the occupation of our Pacific coast. There should be no more of the nonsense foolishness which lies on Vladivostok. However, we shall do as Lenin did in 1917 and bring about an end to this bourgeois democracy of crooks and thieves. Which we've already done. Cool. And do boom, da boom. Do the time, yes please, thank you very much. 
How many, how, how many factories does Germany proper have? What are they doing? Unknown. Um, a lot of manpower, but we have actually about... We might actually have more than them. Plenty of oil. Plenty of oil. They have pretty big industry, but we're not super far away from them. They have a ton of divisions, though. Holy crap. That's a lot of divisions. Train if you need to. And then, Operation February. Oh, yes. Good, 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 good. The Far Eastern left. Following the military victory, the Far East has been reclaimed from the reactionaries. And the foreign backed republic overthrown and the region brought under, back under our control. For now, it remains under military occupation and authority, but as government and society must be reintegrated into a proper state, into a broader state. From the base of Vladivostok. The reactionaries unfortunately managed to stamp out much of the leftist movement in the Far East, purging Communist Party members and others who resisted their rule. As a result, we have our work cut out in rebuilding a socialist presence. Just as in the days of the Civil War, we must make sure to spread our socialist ideals, recruit new members into the party, and rebuild a powerful leftist movement in the East. Give the necessary resources for this program. Moving eastwards. Well, that already left, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a few people, whatever. Nuclear capabilities. Nice. 20% attack bonus? We didn't even need that, but I'll take it. I'll take it again. And cast. Good. Keep making more millets, because my god, we're going to need them. It's not enough here. Go high prioritization. Oh, get rid of that one. That's fine. Not bad. February, total mobilization. Fine with me. Just build the crap out of everything you possibly can. Or did we start making some of these guys? No, because we are still on these guys. That's fine. There's another support equipment, but we'll, we'll need some more later on. So we'll do three more tanks here, and then just max out a whole bunch. Actually, do that, but make sure we get planes first. Planes are super, super important. And if you're still watching, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it, guys. All right, next focus, right? And we shall end the episode with what? Anything else below this? Oh my god, there's so much more. I love it. Handling the Republic's remains. Despite our destruction of the lot of a stock regime, there exist many remnants of that imperialist position in the life of the Far Eastern people, both physically and in terms of ideology. These remnants of the past must be stamped out, and we must make sure that this white sentiment does not flare up. The Far East is part of the Russian Republic, and the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic, and we'll end with... Ooh, purging people. Oh, I don't want to hurt consumer goods, but purge the white sympathizers. In years of fire, which once plagued a great mother land, we successfully unseated the white army and their black baron, Pyotr Rangel, a German, as the government of the lands of Russia. Now, we find a position to be similar as before, as we face a large number of reactionaries on our far eastern coast. Thankfully, our will not be hard to quiet them, and make sure that they pose no threat to our people's will, and of course we'll read this one too, recollectivizing the people, private land. When the Far East was occupied by the American imperialists, the bourgeois government privatized the land of the people, and was subsequently seized by the capitalist robber barons. These moves were wrong, and committed by the government, which cared little for the rights of the people to land. We shall undo this move, and restore the cold causes of the Far East. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll probably push further, further west, to reclaim Moscow. Thanks for watching, have a great, 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 great rest of your day.